Hey guys, Kristen Collins, Raw Real Talks Wellness Edition. It's so awesome to reconnect with you. And I have some very, very exciting news today. First time ever that I'm going to actually be able to hold space with you in a collective live with our special guest today. As you may have heard, the one and only Jennifer Kaufman is in my life, is in the wellness space, and we're going to talk today about connecting with our authenticity and what that looks and feels like and how that's associated with our well-being. And as the divine universe would have it today, Jennifer is in Southwest Florida for a whopping 24 hours, yet here she is. So I am honored and excited to try this new format with you. And let's welcome my beautiful soul sister and friend, Jennifer Kaufman. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank Does you. everybody know it's her birthday? <laughs> so for those of you that are watching live, and even if you watch the recording later, send a birthday message because this woman is all about love. Mm. And she gives it so easily and effortlessly. Mm. And now it's time for us to give it back to her mm. so she can receive. Thank you. Love you. And, and the receiving is what I'm working on. So thank you for that. Yeah. So guys, I want to tell the backstory of how I crossed with Jennifer's experience, her, her beauty, her grace, and her love. And thank you, Heather Christie. You're part of the reason that Jennifer and I connected. So what's cool about this story, guys, on my journey to well-being, and I selected some very alternative ways to approach my body, my mind, my soul healing, I was really challenged, not only with my own understanding of what transpired, but also how to articulate it. It was really challenging for me to be able to express all that I was experiencing. So uh, a friend said to me, you need to watch this movie. Okay, there's got, the movie is called There's Got to Be Something More to Life. And I was like, okay. So I watched said movie on my couch with my little earbuds in, sitting next to my husband, and I was like, oh my gosh. This woman is literally telling a story of, of things that I believe in, that I've experienced, that have helped me to go inside and heal by connecting with who I am and why I am. So afterwards, I told my friend, is there any possibility that you would introduce me to Jennifer? Because I just want to thank her for sharing her story so authentically and let her know how it's deeply impacted my journey and I'd love to shed light on it. So that was how I met Jennifer. Yeah, it was just, it's such a divine, you know, we talk about synchronicity, right? Um, I find it ironic that people come into our lives and I've come to understand that people come into our lives for a reason. And there's no coincidence that we met and then we just fell in love with each other, like as people. And now we're embarking on a journey of collaboration and sharing our insights and wisdom to inspire, encourage and empower others that they can have it too. And I think that's the key thing is that, you know, we've come we've come so far in our journey of learning how to heal naturally. And I want to share, I have no background in health and wellness prior to this experience. My background is entirely in business. And a lot of the things that I learned in my journey, I was very skeptical of. I thought that shit's weird. It's woo woo. And if that really worked, why isn't it mainstream? Until I had an experience, a life altering experience that opened me up to frankly surrender beyond my mind, there's gotta be a better way. Mm. And then by me just opening up to the universe, things started to show up into my life. People started showing up into my life. Modalities started showing up into my life that took me on an inward journey, an inward journey of learning how to heal. And from that, I rose up from the ashes of my traumatic experience. And now we want that for you too. And that's what this is really all about. 
that's what our shared community and raw real talks is about and as always as we share this journey and we've got the beautiful janet namaste who helps us in the healing modalities um mariama who's hosted this platform so many of you guys that plug in and weigh in and share your healing journeys and your turning back in to know and love yourself i really appreciate this opportunity to connect today. Jennifer, would you share with folks who are not yet familiar with your literal aha moment, your blowing up of your life as you knew it, mm-hmm. that um, was very uh, ex- expansive, extensive, traumatic, but that opened you up to really getting in touch with who you are. Can you share with folks what actually happened to you? Absolutely, but before I do, yep. has any of you ever experienced when you felt like the rug was pulled out from underneath you or life threw you a curveball that you didn't expect coming at all. And for me, that was standing 15 feet from the first of two explosions at the Boston Marathon bombings. Life prior to that was actually really good. I had just come off my best year in business. I had just taken um, a couple of months off sabbatical to celebrate that. And um, I decided I was going to write a business book for the first time. And so life was really good and expansive. And then this experience happened that literally shattered my world on every aspect of my being. And life as I knew it was over. I did not understand why I was spared that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, In fact, there is such a thing as survivor's guilt. And there are people like myself who wish that we had died that day because the journey of rising up from that uh, experience, as horrific as it was, also has turned out to be the greatest gift of my life. It's the both and. And it doesn't matter. You do not need to go through these horrific experiences to wake up. Wake up to who you are and to step into the magnificence of who you are. Mm. Every single person on the planet has value. Everyone has value. And it's just a matter of embracing that amongst each other, even in our differences, right? And I feel we are at a time now more than ever where we're embracing and coming together, you know, different uh, different walks of life, different uh, viewpoints, different just different people coming together because we individually are saying to ourselves, there's got to be more to life, which is the name of the documentary. And when we lean in and we start to connect, all Kristen and I did was connect. And then we felt, we realized we have a lot in common. We have a similar values. We just met a few months ago, and I feel like I've known you for a lifetime. Mm. And that's what's possible here when we open up and just to connect. And when we connect, we become more alive. And we start to, we start to like have this magical kind of energy that happens within us. And that's what we want more of. We want to have this ripple effect that is contagious mm. because it's so juicy and so magical. And every, everyone deserves to have it. Mm. Preach on, sister. Preach on. There's so much that's coming up in me, and I have I have chills. And I love the synchronicities that life affords us mm-hmm. as we start getting expansive in who we are and why we are. And we titled this Connecting with Your Authenticity and How That Affects Your Well-Being. Because you start attracting experiences, opportunities, unknowns that suddenly arrive in your life and you wake up to that just can take you to a different transcendence. And this happened, this is the coolest story with Jennifer and I. I watch your movie, we get introduced, we Zoom. We were like, you know, no agenda, just hey, thank you. And I'm like, love you. She's like, love you, that was cool. And she's, I let her know that I had written a book and I had just received my audio version. And so I sent her a copy of it. So she starts listening to her Phoenix rising and she's kind of texting me and, you know, weighing in. She's like, yeah, I see how our stories are similar. Yeah. I see our soul connection even more clearly as I'm understanding authentic you. 
Then she gets about two thirds of the way through the book and she starts reading about a woman who's in my life who has completely changed the trajectory of who I am. And I talk about Heather Christie, who's I think on here today a couple times in my book because it was magical what Heather helped me learn. Jennifer reaches out to me. She goes, you're not going to believe this. Jennifer does not live in Florida. She lives in New England. And she's like, I, well, you tell them. So I'm listening to the book and I'm like, Heather Christie? The, the, like, I only know of one Heather Christie. And Heather Christie has forever changed my life for the better. And has, I mean, talk about a powerhouse of a woman. So I instantly stop the audio and I pick up the phone and go, there's no chance that you know the same person I do. And she's like, uh, yeah, I do. And what was what's fascinating is I worked with Heather back in the 2007, 2008, and I think 2009 time period when she was helping me launch my business. But actually what she doesn't realize is she didn't help me launch my business. She helped me get rid of the shit that was in the way of me being the greatest version of myself and took me on a transformational path and journey that I will never forget. And... I lost contact with Heather after the bombings and Heather had reached out wanting to be there, but I just wasn't in the space to receive. I had isolated myself from the world and frankly was trying to make sense of it all and just to find this semblance of safety again. And so long story short is we didn't really connect and I had been estranged for her for all these years until I listened to this audiobook, And then, you know, I came to Southwest Florida back in March and we got reconnected and reunited. And now, you know, now we're exploring what it might be like to play together and to create transformation on a global level, mm. but together. Mm. And I just feel incredibly, incredibly blessed. And never in a million years did I see this coming. And this is the possibility of opening up and just trusting in everything Everything, even the bad things, are happening for us and for our highest good. And when we can embrace that and pivot and look for the good, even in those bad and horrific situations, we have the ability to rise up. And when we rise up, we shift our energy vibration. Yes. When we shift our energy vibration, we start to attract more of who we are and what we what, what we're becoming. Which is exactly the theme for today is getting comfortable in own skin, getting in touch with your unique destiny or unique purpose of your why. Why are you here? Yes, it's going to look different than other. How do you get comfortable in that in a society that's all oh, very often about sameness, right? Let's all fit into a mold and really being able to step into that is something that's challenging. And here we were able to attract Oh, you know, this mutual friend, just some huge openings and awareness. And a lot of you guys were plugged in when Heather was our guest on Raw Real Talks a few months ago. And if you missed that, that is in our archive. And speak of which, oh, hi, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, we are sitting here talking about the synchronicity of both of us having our lives changed by knowing and loving you, and yet by being our authentic selves, right? We connected, and you were a huge part of both of our journeys from different parts of the United States. Well, I was listening in, and I hit the I hit the little button. I'm like, can I just can I do this? Can I hop in here? It's so good to see you two together. And um, you know, I I just wanted to share something really fast that I thought was so funny. I was talking with Paul the other day about the two of you and how you've come together and how you're collaborating and how Jennifer did the workshop with you and just so many things that were that that you're creating. And Paul said, "So tell me again, when did you introduce those two? How did that happen?" And I said, "Oh, no, no, no. Sit down, let me tell you a story." And and he he literally just used the word synchronicity. He's like, "You can't make this stuff up that it's incredible that the two of you found your way to each other. I, I feel like maybe I was supposed to have done that. So sorry, I'm a little slow on the uptake. Um, Cause I think I was to probably introduce you. And then now you had to have all these other things happen to bring you together. But just know that I, 
I just love you too. And I think um, the two of you coming together is just amazing. Mm. And just to be clear, it's not just the two of us. You're coming on this journey with us. We of course. Collective. So Heather, I, since we get you uh, to say hi to you today and you've impacted both of us so strongly, separately yet succinctly and divinely, uh, and I was just saying that you were a guest on Raw Real Talks a few months ago, and that recording is in the archives. Um, feel free to check that conversation out. You've affected both of us so strongly in how we relate to ourselves through our mindset shifting, through our open heart coherence. So I'd love you to weigh in on this conversation. Jennifer and I picked the topic of connecting to your authentic self and how that affects your well-being. What are your thoughts on really that inner knowing of who you are and why you are as you step into, you know, living that best life? Oh, that's such a good and such a deep question. Thank you for that. Um, connecting to our authentic self, I think for me anyway, has become a very important focus. And it's kind of amazing that you can get to be where I am at my age and recognize that there's so much more to find out and to connect with. And like, wait a minute, um, you've been with you this whole time. So how is it possible that you're still trying to figure out part, you know, pieces and parts of who that authentic self is? So it's one of those things where the, the more you dive in, the more you recognize you don't know and how much more there is to know, which is such a beautiful and fun thing to go through. Um, but I think that one of the things that has, that has become clear to me is that there are, there are many people who have done this, right. Who have really focused their, their entire lifetime on, on learning and studying things like your authentic self. And so, so I, I just have, I dove in to this area and started reading and watching and listening to everything that showed up in my path that spoke to me. And what I think is so important to do for everyone is to, as you're taking the information in from outside sources, always check in with what resonates with you, what, what feels like the truth, because we all have our different interpretations and our own versions, and, and we all have our own truths, honestly. And there, I believe, is, is you know, a core truth that all of us will be interpreting along the way based on how much we've evolved. And it's funny how we attract people in our worlds as we continue to learn and as we continue to grow that really resonate with us, right? We're magnetic. We are attracting people completely like the way that you two attracted each other. There's, I mean, you were meant to be together, right? Um, and so just as you're, as you're reading, I mean, I'm literally at the point now where if I pick up a book and it's not resonating with me immediately, it's, it's getting closed and it's getting put away. And I don't care. I don't care what I spend on it. I have literally given away hundreds and hundreds of books and same thing with an audio, with a video, with anything. And so with the news, as an example, with anything that you're reading, watching, or listening to, check in with yourself, with your, your higher self, your soul self, your authentic self, and ask yourself, is this, does it feel good for me? Is it resonating with me? And if it's not, shut it off. If it doesn't make you feel good, shut it off. But that's, that's my two cents. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh in here. So how do you deal with the inner voice that says, but everybody else needs to you know, be on board with this. What am I missing here? You know, so, you know, stay connected and stay plugged. So if we have a different resonance, but the people around us in our immediate circles are like following something, what do we do then? I think that's a really great, great question. I have in the past really paid attention to what other people were listening to and what other people were bought into. And it mattered to me what they thought of me and whether I accepted uh, what they thought. And so I used to go along sometimes to get along. And for me right now, I feel so comfortable with my people telling them. And I know that both of you will totally agree with me we could be sitting in the same circle and resonating really well together. But if there were something that, that I didn't agree with, I would feel so comfortable 
saying thank you. And I love hearing your perspective and even sharing my perspective and how it's different and allowing both us to both of us to be exactly where we are. And so there are, and I would guarantee you that there are things that I'm reading, watching or listening to right now that, that you two aren't and that you may never, and I'm totally cool with that too. Um, so I say, Jennifer, just like you know already, that we need to just honor ourselves and feel okay with and confident in, I'm going to follow what feels good to me. I'm going to stay in my flow because it, like, that's my job. I like, I finally get, it's not my job to change anyone else. It really isn't. And I know as a coach, I used to really believe like, I got to make this impact. No, I have to change me and be who I need to be and be that that model, right, of my own truth, and it will attract whoever it attracts, and hopefully I can make an impact and be a catalyst to help people, you know, get through some of their limiting beliefs, but yeah, you know, you know, that, and we, we even talk today, and we see things a little bit different in certain areas, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be able to share that with each other. Well, thank you. I appreciate you from your perspective, because you said some things to me that landed, and I was like, oh, what about that? And so what I love about it is we hold space for each other just to be yeah. we don't everything. We don't have to like everything the same. Like we just like we just coexist and we love and appreciate each other just for who we are. And that's it. It's that simple. I mean it sounds so <laughs> simple. It's not easy actually all the time to do mm -hmm. that. I wanna actually while we still have a little bit of time because I think it's so important here. I find it ironic that I met Heather in two thousand six just on the heels of an recession, and then I brought back into the meeting with Heather, reuniting with Heather again the last couple of months in the midst of, you know, what happened in the world. And I would love for you to share a little bit about your, more about your wisdom and how more than ever we've got to listen to our heart and soul and what feels right. Because you have witnessed people succeed well beyond what was statistically considered normal in the midst of complete chaos mm -hmm. of complete devastation when everything is going on around what do you say to those people that go yeah but yeah but we've got you know we've just spent a lot of time you know, yeah but we've got you know we're you know we have inflation on the rise we have you know, gas prices highest ever in our country, and maybe even in the world. We have all of this negative stuff happening. Like, it's doom and gloom, right? Mm -hmm. Or not? Well, yeah, good, good point there. And it's funny you say, right? And I'm like, really? Really? Well, you, you might absolutely be right on all of that, right? That, that, that we've got some stuff going on that, that maybe is even historically dramatic. And yet I, um, you, you really get to choose not what's happening out there in your environment. You don't necessarily get to choose that. You can influence it for sure, but yet you, there's a lot of stuff that we can't change, a lot of stuff that we can't control. There's one thing, if one thing only, that we always, always have control over, and that's how we respond to the environment, to the people, to the situations, to the economy, to the politics, to the polarity, to all of it. And that really is a choice. Now, most of us end up reacting to our environment um, maybe just by, just by taking it in and, and having perceptions and impressions and emotions that flow naturally. Some people get really conscious about how they respond. And I think that's the opportunity, is to remember how powerful you are and remember that you have the ability to consciously choose every response that you have to every single situation. And you can either react to things based on how you did it in the past, which I don't know about you, but for me in the past, I didn't do it that well. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I, um, I used to get really caught up in stuff. I used to, like, really feel dramatic about things and and then one day I learned that that's probably not serving me so well and I that there are other ways of doing that and so I would just encourage everybody to always remember how powerful you are and that thoughts are things you know and if you are like me and you believe that your thinking actually has something to do with your results in life ultimately then 
are you paying attention to those things that you're thinking about? Are you paying attention to the thoughts that you're allowing to go through your brain? Your brain is a very, very, very powerful instrument, and your mind is even that much more powerful. Do you understand its makeup? Do you understand what you're doing to it with each thought that you think? Do you understand the chemicals and the hormones that you're sending through your body based on whether that thought is positive or negative? So gas prices are high. That, that's a thing. How do you respond to it? Right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a choice. It's a total choice. And, and we forget. I forget all the time that I can choose. And so I, here's how I remind myself. I was just training a company today, um, some amazing leaders within a company today, I should say. And they were asking the same questions. Like, well, what do you do? How do you deal with the stress and the negativity and what's happening? And, you know, just the, the, the key that I've learned is to check your emotions. If it doesn't feel good, stop in the moment and ask yourself, what thought created that feeling? And then ask yourself, do I want to keep thinking it? I don't care if it's right or wrong. Do I want to keep thinking it, yes or no? And then make a new choice. Hmm. Well, I the juiciness of being in uh, with you guys, uh, I think this is really powerful for our shared community with Raw Real Talks. You know, all three of us have lived a very a strong corporate life, right? Mm -hmm. Where we've chosen to act a certain way, be a certain way, and think a certain way. And by, for different circumstances, we have chosen to actually pause and reevaluate. Am I authentic who I am? Is this really, you know, how I want to show up? Is this really what I believe in? And all three of us have gone in and are coming back out with new thoughts new ways of, <laughs> and I'm not going to speak for you guys, but this is what I'd like you to speak on, is often I am not in a room full of others who are also now in alignment with my new way of thinking. And being comfortable in my own skin, being authentic to who I am in a historic shared community, right, my town, my, for my former colleagues, whatever, and just being comfortable with being authentically who I am. Mm -hmm. So I will say, I would say for me, it's been a big shift, right? Brown is incorporated in an amazing career. And I left because I was burnt out. And, um, and then I started my own company. And fortunately, there was my business coach. When we launched that company, I, again, had some really great successes. I had some struggles, I'm not going to lie. I had some struggles, but I had some really great successes. But for me, there was always more. And I, what I didn't realize was I was actually dying to be me. What do I mean by that? I had trauma as a little girl and, you know, as a young adult. And we live in a society where there's no room for that. Now, let's be really clear. I'm not talking that we go out and we keep telling our story and re-dramatizing ourselves and others in that process. It's not what I'm saying. But I also don't agree that burying it in the closet, pretending like it's not there, doesn't work. How do I know? I lived that 40 fucking bomb. My friend blow me open. See, um, nobody ever has to go through what I went through. And I hope to God that we learn from that. But the point here is that every said it earlier, every single one of us is and yet we're united. It's time for us to be ourselves. And whatever that looks like. And so what Heather speaks about is like how do you know what happened to your feeling? If something doesn't feel right, go do it. Just because the rest of the people around you are doing it. Doesn't mean my family some of whom are doctors and nurses and, and, and family and friends said I could never learn how to heal naturally. I chose not to believe them. I had doubt. I wasn't sure, but I promise you, I wasn't willing to go down the other. I wasn't willing to stay in the prison sentence that I found myself in after that experience. I was going to do whatever it took to get out of that hellhole. And I learned and discovered things along the way that they were within inside of me. It was like going on a treasure hunt. 
you know, and I went and on this treasure hunt inside of me and delved deeper and deeper and deeper into the essence. And I had to learn to be my very best friend. I was my worst critic. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so as a follow up, and then Heather, I want to hear your thoughts. So having this emergence in community that maybe isn't also having a, <laughs> a deep inner moving, you know, transcending experience. So we start showing up differently, but we're within the same containers, right? Professionally, personally at home, you know, we're all very blessed that we're supported in our transcendence, but others in the Raw Real Talk community, I'm asking you, uh, is that a struggle? Is that making you uncomfortable? And I want to shed light on all three of us have gone through our own connection to who we really are, our own healing journey, and we're coming back out of that introspection different. And sometimes it no longer resonates at the same energetic level with folks that I was previously in community with. Well, and I will say this, it's not comfortable, folks. I want to be really clear, it's not comfortable. So this is about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And when you do that, you're going to find and discover things that are beyond what your wildest imagination could be. You have this opening to find new friendships that are just like mind blowing. Heather, what are, what are your thoughts and your emergence as you, as you continue to show up? So um, I appreciate you just opening this part of the conversation because um, you are so right that you, you, you might actually lose some friends. You will actually. <laughs> you will definitely lose some friends. I mean, I actually, I feel like um, it's, it's not only okay, it's just, it's just perfect yeah. as that happens because um, I believe everyone's in our life for a reason and, and it's, they're, they're all good, right? All good, all for our growth. And when someone no longer resonates with me, as long as I'm still growing, either they've outgrown me or I, maybe I've outgrown them. We've just gone different ways. But if that happens, it's, it's really good because what is open next is so amazing. And I can tell you that um, I still have friends from grade school, literally, and we still get together. And I love them and I, and I will always have a really, really special place for, for people who I grew up with because there's that connection, right? And and there are also people, though, that because of my growth and, the, and what I'm studying and what I'm opening myself up for, I have an entire new network of people who I've been connected with. In fact, two weeks ago, I just went to uh, Mexico for a um, train the trainer program for a NeuroChange Solutions, which is Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. And he trained us how to deliver his materials. And there were 70 other amazing human beings in that course with me from all over the world. I, I can't even tell you how many different countries I should know this, but it was, it was profound. It was astounding. And, and I felt like these are my people. Like, how am I so fortunate at this age to be, to be opened up to this new network? And, and, I, and I've met people who feel like, you know, your friends are your friends that you grew up with, but, you know, it's hard to make new friends. No, it's not. It's not at all. Your network is, it has, has only just begun, right? I mean, there's so, I can't, I can't wait to continue to grow and see who gets put in my path. Um, but yeah, if you're, there are going to be people who just aren't on that same page. And trust me, I found a lot of people who just aren't, on my same page right now and I'm okay with it. I, this is the other thing. I really truly honor that whatever someone perceives in their world, no matter how different it is from how I see things, it's the truth for them. Not right or wrong, not good or bad, but it's definitely their truth and I honor that. It's, it's all good, right? It's all good and I think there's an opportunity to remember that even though they might have outgrown us or we outgrew them, always love them and find to them. You know, I know my younger self, I didn't do that. And I'm not perfect. I I left them, you know, they you know, you've you've had some roadkill. I didn't leave I didn't necessarily so so 
I used to get really upset. I'm like, what's wrong? How come they don't want to come on this ride? It's kind of like a magic carpet ride, a roller coaster, twists and turns and ups and downs. And it's scary and exciting all at the same time. Why wouldn't anyone else want to do that? And I'd get really upset because I was like, there must be something wrong with me that they don't want to come play. And I had to learn that it's okay. People are going to, they're going to do their own thing when they feel called to do it but we can love them and embrace them and not be upset and angry and frustrated with them and just honor them in exactly where they are. It doesn't mean that you're better than, it doesn't mean that you're less than, it just, it just is. Mm. And that is just the, the most beautiful culmination as we are already past our half hour of, you know, here's an example of the three of us who new friends, old friends, reunited, reignited. I think you guys are reignited. I think Heather, you and I are reignited. And I love that we were able to, Heather, thank you so much for hopping on to this conversation. Thanks for letting me crash your party. It was so fun. Oh, you're always invited. But really for our shared community, when we talk about our well-being, and if we're denying our authenticity, it is, it does nothing to aid our health. It does nothing to have us live this vibrant, life and we are examples of, of three people who are metamorphosing transcending awakening and going through the ups and downs of that and i hope we were able to showcase and share that while it can be scary and uncertain at times it's so powerful and we attract new or reunited opportunities that blow our minds and really aid in our support of who we are and why we are so Soul Sister Jennifer, thank you. thank you. Heather, love you. I love you both. Uh, Raw Real Talks. This is a community that our beautiful sister Mariama created where we can come together and we can hold space and have real conversations about the ups and downs of healing and thriving and being well. And as always, we so appreciate you plugging in and being a part of this journey. If you have comments, if you have thoughts, if there are other topics you'd like us to explore, please put them in the comment section because Mariama is on this thing all day, every day, checking it out and interfacing and making sure we're holding the space that's helpful. And next week will be in July and Janet will be hosting Raw Real Talks Healing Edition. Normally it's on that first Tuesday at 11. But because of the holiday, she has moved it to Wednesday at 11. And as always, the first of the month, I get to be her guest. And as always, I can't wait to see what our beautiful sister Janet has to say. So join us on uh, July 6th at 11 Eastern. And until then, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. Have a very, very blessed 4th of July weekend. And remember to spread love. Spread love. Bye, guys. We should do it like that every time. I know, right? It's awesome.